it's first it's foremost it's a great pleasure to see all the faces you know it reminds us of the good old times and as prachi tried to remind us correctly just before you know indeed all of us are very old indeed many of us i should say speak for myself it's a, absolutely a great pleasure to be here in this session and i thank uh, kavita and sridev to ask me to uh, uh, actually chair this uh, session so before since uh, one of us is in a bit of a rush uh, i will uh, before uh, talking anything else i will give the stage to ram ramaswami ram myself deepak mustansir and mohan we were all together in tif for more or less, more or less in close by age groups and have had some wonderful times and chai sessions and discussions so i'm sure that ram will talk about that and much more so first i ask ram to start thank you very much rohini and uh, let me start by wishing mustan sir and deepak a very happy 70th uh, i don't even know when whether you are there already or not but since the occasion is around your 70th happy birthday guys and many many more years to come um as rohini said uh, you know there was a time i mean seeing all the faces over here and seeing especially deepak mustan sir rashida manju um one is led back to those years years ago in tifr when prachi believe it or not we were <laughs> in a prem so <laughs> this you know this is the kind of session which should be accompanied by very generous amounts of wine and all sorts of things <laughs> and so on and so forth uh, but nevertheless this was a session that <laughs> want to attend uh, to to also sort of acknowledge really uh, how important both deepak and mustan sir have been in my own life um i as you know i i was in tfr for a few years five six years actually um and during that time i was in the uh, chemical physics group uh, but almost inevitably i would find myself sitting with the theory guys and chatting with deepak and mustan sir and i'm really very proud that my collaboration with them and my uh, wanderings away from chemistry were uh, largely occasioned by conversations with both deepak and with mustan sir uh, our earliest papers go back to the uh, mid 80s at that time but uh, it was really a wonderful wonderful time of friendship um, and a great great way of discovering oneself and so on Uh, more than reminisce about you know all those good old days and what have you i also wanted to acknowledge uh, just how important deepak and mustan sir have been uh, to this little effort that uh, that you know that from tifr i moved to jnu as many of you know and um, i mean it's no exaggeration to say that the kind of support both intellectual and then the friendship that they extended to us uh, as i moved to jnu uh, has really stood us in good stead i mean already two of the speakers over here uh, two of uh, two other speakers over here are uh, uh, jm jnu alumni from the early days devashish and sanjay and uh, i was going through the list of people who have been at this at the conference and uh, sakuntala and shankar ghosh and anand mohan and others have all been you know benefited from being at jnu in one way or the other and in the early years uh, it really was a lot of support that we got from uh, deepak and mustan sir i don't know there was a, there was a program that we started where we had both of them come at separate points in time and give uh, i don't know three or four lectures we tortured them but we made them give a set of lectures when we had barely had any students we didn't have a building we didn't have anything but they came they participated and uh, years later you know deepak has come back in fact he came back for the 25th uh, jubilee of sps uh, and so it has always been a great support to us 
Um, in addition to, of course, the incredible work that both of them have done for the statistical physics community, uh, I wanted to put uh, on record and to share with all of you how important they have been in the life of one university department. Anyhow, guys, I can go on and on, but thank you very much, both of you. Happy 70th and many, many more years to come. Yes. Thanks a lot, Ram. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so thanks, Ram. And we now release you to your other duties. <laughs> <laughs> so, Satya, who was a student of uh, Deepak. I don't know, Satya, where is the first student? Yes. Yeah. And my memories of uh, Satya is that he and I sat next to each other on two chairs working on the terminals late at night. <laughs> <laughs> Satya was already doing C programming and me bumbling around with my Fortran programming. <laughs> That's the oldest memory I have of Satya. So Satya has uh, actually gone on and you know done great things. And uh, I invite him to talk about his memories of uh, both science and personal reminiscences of Deepak and Mustansi. Satya. So let me let me first start by thanking Shakuntala, Kavita, and Trideep, and the, all the other people in the background for organizing this wonderful meeting to celebrate the uh, 70 years of Deepak and Musansi. And as you have known, you know, I mean, they, they are not just great scientists themselves, but uh, they created this vibrant and very active uh, statistical physics community in India, which is really wonderful to see, as you have seen in the last two meeting, last two days. So so after two days of serious conferencing. So I thought that instead of giving a scientific talk, uh, I would like to share uh, some of my personal fond memories of both of them from the late 80s in, you know, in TIFR. And uh, this will show uh, in some sense, uh, the uh, sort of, uh, you know, human side, the, the, the sort of lighter and funnier side of uh, both of them, hopefully. So, so, you know, I mean, I was trying to find some pictures from the late 80s of both of them, and uh, but I could not find them. And those days, I didn't have a smart. I mean, no, we didn't have a smartphone, and I still don't have a smartphone. So of course, I turned to Google like everybody else, and uh, you know, I just uh, typed uh, Deepak Dhar and Mustansi Verma Young, and uh, and uh, and this is what I got. Okay. So now the guy on the right resembles a little bit of Mustansi, but the guy on the left, of course, has no resemblance to Deepak at all. And, uh, <laughs> and the guy on the left is a guy called Deepak Dhar, uh, who is a consultant manager in some, uh, you know, some uh, startup firm called Zomato. And the guy on the right <laughs> uh, is Hussein, is Mustansi's youngest son. So uh, say that I said, okay, <laughs> let me, let me, let me be smarter. So then I just added uh, a sort of tag physicist. And this time I was lucky. And uh, so uh, so I got the two pictures of them from Google who were, when they were in the 30s. But as Sriram pointed out, you know, they haven't changed much in the last 40 years. And uh, so many, many happy returns of the day. And, you know, these two gentlemen, they were, for me personally, I mean, they were my, literally my friends, philosophers and guides. So, you know, I owe everything to them. So, so I want to just tell you some, you know, couple of funny stories from the late eighties. And um, so, so let me start with the story of Deepak. Okay. So this is called the Deepak and the Blackboard. So, you know, this was 1988, uh, January, I still remember. And I just joined TIFR as a graduate student. And uh, so those days we used to have the, you know, the first year graduate course, core course. Uh, and we learned that our first <clears> course <throat> will be taught by someone on, will be on quantum mechanics and it will be taught by someone called Deepak Dhar. So we went to this uh, classroom uh, in AG69 on the ground floor in TIFR and, uh, and then Deepak came and then you know, he immediately started uh, teaching us about helium atom. I still remember this very well, helium atom and <laughs> uh, the blackboard uh, you know, got, this is not the real blackboard, I mean, this is a cartoon picture. So the blackboard got filled up with, uh, with uh, you know, with uh, with equations, and uh, and those of you will remember AG69 that uh, the the blackboard used to roll up and down. You could scroll up the uh, you know you have to press some horizontal bar 
and it will go go up and down now deepak of course uh, you know uh, didn't uh, write the equation number okay so some of the equations had gone up and then one of my classmates i think it was vidya krishnamurthy uh, so she at some point she wanted to ask deepak that deepak i don't understand this equation and she was pointing her finger to some equation and uh, so deepak said which equation so uh, then she was saying that one so the, the point is that now if if you try to find out these equations deepa could i mean there are many ways to get the, get to the right equation like this one for example but uh, but he was not uh, doing that deepa always has a unique way of doing things so what he did he forgot of course that he could put down the equation by pressing on the horizontal bar he wouldn't remember that but his unique way was the following so he used to take a piece of chalk and then from 3 meter distance he would hit on the blackboard and the point was that it was you know amazing so it hit exactly the right equation and uh, and then you know we, we got a bit naughty and you know every every now and then we'll ask him deepak i don't understand that equation and you know he would always throw the chalk and it will always hit the right equation he was like jonty roads you know this famous south african uh, fielder who uh, threw at wickets from the 30 meters of distance <laughs> and uh, and you know i mean and to tell you the truth you know i mean uh, i was so impressed with his skill of hitting the right equation that i decided then and there that i have to do my piece to this guy and uh, <laughs> i you know i i consider myself privileged to be his uh, first phd student so this was the first story the second story of deepak was those of you who remember his office from tifr i mean this is not the real, real picture of his office it's a cartoon again and uh, <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an approximation <laughs> and, uh, you know he didn't have a have a cat you see a cat on this thing jipo didn't have a cat he had a dog <laughs> called panther but panther was very stable but um, you know but the thing in fact i mean i remember that uh, you know first time uh, my wife victoria when she came to tifr so she went to meet deepak in his office uh, and uh, she of course knew that deepak works on sand piles and uh, then she went in and then she came out after half an hour and then she told me that uh, i mean this guy i mean he not only calculates sand piles he actually makes sand piles okay and uh, <laughs> but the but the but the extraordinary thing about this sand pile was that uh, he actually knew uh, exactly, exactly how to get things out of it okay so i mean i remember once i you know did an experiment i mean you know, I, i had to xerox a you know paper so i made two copies of it and i gave it to one to him and one i kept it to myself and deepak said okay i'll i'll read this uh, paper and we'll discuss in few days time so three days later i went to his office and uh, i told him deepak you know i mean you remember that i photocopied this paper but i seem to have somehow have misplaced my copy so do you have yours and you know he, he just took him one second to pull it out of this sand file it was some he knew exactly where to find things i mean you know so this was a perfect example of uh, kind of order in chaos i mean his <laughs> his, his mind was of course fully ordered but uh, and he could always find things out huh? and uh, so because, i mean i can go on with these stories but uh, let me since i don't have too much time so let me now turn to mustan sir and uh, so this is my first story of mustan sir was uh, uh is mustan sir subramaniya who just spoke some time back and the west canteen so this was my very first day in tifr and i didn't know anybody in tifr so I, you know i i i go to the third floor and it was it was late afternoon and i was walking there uh, along the corridor and then i saw this office uh, you know which uh, half door open and there were some animated voices coming from inside this office So I go and knock and go inside. So this was Musan Sir you know, discussing heavy fermion with uh, Subramaniam, and so Musan Sir said, "Yes, yes, come, come, sit down." So I sat down, and of course I didn't understand what they were discussing. And this was around you know five thirty, five forty around that time. And then you know a few minutes later, I mean around five fifty, fifty, fifty-five or something, five fifty-nine. I mean suddenly, I mean Musan Sir looked at his watch. Uh, and i uh, said yes and subramaniam looked at his watch and he says yes and you know they both jumped out of their seats and uh, they started running out of the office and musanthi just told me that come so you know i was uh, i was also running after them and uh, and we ran in the corridor and we came to the lift they didn't take the lift they were taking three steps at a time 
And uh, I was, I thought that the building was on fire. I mean, the, <laughs> what, what's going to happen? I mean, you, know, you, you heard all kinds of you know things about you know before that the crazy stories about scientists, but this was really you know uh, happening. And uh, so, so, and then then I realized that uh, basically, so all three of us are running towards the West Canteen. <laughs> the West Canteen used to close at six o'clock exactly, and at five fifty nine we arrived there to have our last coffee. But the thing was that, you know, this was not just the first day. I mean, it was to have happened every day after that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that was uh, that was wonderful. And let me just tell you my last story of Mustansi. <laughs> Mustansi was teaching us uh, statistical mechanics. And uh, and again in 1869. And, you know, Mustansi, when he used to teach, he always had this pointer. And, uh, and once in a while, he would put the pointer on the floor. And he would, you know, just uh, rest his back on the pointer. And uh, so he was doing this, and uh, and then uh, uh, sorry, uh, oops, uh, he was doing this, and then at that point, a cockroach started going up the pointer. <laughs> so then, uh, then you know, one of the one of the students or one of us said that uh, Musanshi, there is a cockroach. So Musanshi, you know, by the time Musanshi turned back, the cockroach also climbed down the you know the the pointer and went under the desk. So Musanshi thought that we were pulling his leg. Okay, <laughs> he said, "Are you sure?" I said, "Yes, yes." Everybody said there's a cockroach there. So then, you know, he took great care. You know, he he were bent down. Uh, he went under the desk, and after a few minutes of efforts, he actually got the cockroach on his uh, on his hand, uh, on his on his pointer like this, and uh, and then he just you know took took great care to take it outside the door of the AG sixty nine. And then he said that it's somebody else's problem now. And uh, this, <laughs> this cartoon of Mustansi actually was uh, drawn by my colleague Christoph Texier here at Orsay. He mm -hmm. somehow remembered Mustansi very much uh, from, from his last yeah. visit to Orsay. And he's, he's very good at uh, drawing cartoon. I mean, I, I can't draw these things. So again, mm -hmm. again, I can go on with these stories. Uh, so I have to stop because the time is limited. So let me just uh, thank both of you again for not only for your immense contributions to science, uh, science and for you know guiding us all to become not just physicists but also good human beings and uh, i also take this occasion to thank manju rashida shurubi prachi mustali and hussein for making us all feel really part of the families and for so many really unforgettable and wonderful memories which i'll you know cherish through my life uh, and uh, so bon continuous, as they say in French, uh, and wish you both very, many happy and productive years in good health. Thank you very much. Thanks, Satya. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there was a particular thrill in reaching the West Canteen just as it, as it was. <laughs> exactly. <a particular. laughs> but as this is something I too remember. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, it was it was it was a it was a wonderful exercise. It was a ritual, okay. <laughs> it was a ritual, yes. <laughs> okay, so really thanks, Satya, for bringing back those days in everybody's mind. Could you please stop sharing no, the screen? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stop sharing. And uh, after this, I would actually ask uh, HRK, who is again, uh, I believe, a very old friend of uh, Deepak from Kanpur days and I met HRK for the first time when he came visiting Deepak in TIFR to give lectures on Baithe Ansats. That's how I remember the first uh, time I saw HRK when he had already joined uh, IISC. So after that, I had, since uh, one line introduction, the introduction has already gone three lines. So HRK, please start. Okay. Actually, I realized that uh, possibly amongst all the people gathered here, I have known uh, Deepak and Mustan sir the longest. I was just going back and it's it's 53 plus years. You may wonder how the hell is part possible. <laughs> it turned out that actually when we were all in uh, BSc first year, we were all science standard scholars. And then in the summer of 1968, and there was this memorable summer school, science standard summer school in IIT Kanpur where the three of us met for the first time. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, I remember being thoroughly impressed by both of them in very in different ways. Deepak used to sit at uh, the back of the class and ask this penetrating questions, you know, and every time he asked the question, I would say, oh God, 
I, that question, even that question didn't occur to me. So, and then Musan Sir was again, already a star, I think, because I remember, you know, he used to uh, experiments and so on. He was like really excelled at and we had some experimental projects and so on. So I remember talking to him about some microwave, uh, you know, scattering of microwaves by a crystal of uh, uh, metal balls and all that. I, I just remember. Anyway, that was like a memorable summer school, which uh, influenced all of us. I mean, in uh, very positive ways to, I'm, I'm pretty, I don't know to what extent Mustan Sir and Deepak were influenced, but Deepak and I both joined IIT Kanpur as uh, master students. Then of course I got to know him uh, even better. We overlapped for two years. Mustan Sir actually went abroad right after bachelor's degree. So I hadn't, uh, you know, I lost touch with him for a while. And I don't remember whether we reconnected when I uh, went to the US for studies. Actually, um, there were two occasions where I would, have, I would have had a closer interaction with Deepak. One was actually both of us could have gone to Caltech uh, because both of us, we got offers from Caltech, but um, Deepak went to Caltech and I somehow, after a great dilemma, I chose to go to Cornell. And then I lost touch with Deepak for a while, except, uh, I mean, I would learn about him. I remember occasionally, uh, I think towards when he had published this uh, work on um, uh, lattices with uh, fractional dimension, I remember um, David Nelson, who was at Cornell, getting very excited about the paper. So, you know, I knew that he was doing great things. So, and then I think we didn't have much interaction until all of us returned to India. And again, there was another fork where, you know, I actually got a job in TF, or many people might not know, but the same position, same kind of job, visiting fellowship or whatever, that Deepak and Mustan came back on. But for various reasons, which I won't go into, I guess because of destiny, you can say, I, I went to IISC. <laughs> Otherwise, I might have been their colleague. So anyway, so another life maybe. Okay, I will make a different choice <laughs> knowing mm -hmm. what they accomplished together at uh, TIFR. So anyway, so after that, we've been in touch on and off. I, they visited me, I visited them. I've shared wonderful hospitality from of Rashida and Manju. And, uh, you know, it's been a great journey. One, uh, one more uh, set of things which I recall is, you know, they, uh, Professor SK Joshi used to organize these uh, annual meetings in Rurki uh, every year in those early days. It was a small community, condensed matter uh, on the whole. So we used to, it was very nice to meet. I actually had a nice memorable photograph with Bhaskaran, Musan Seir, Deepak, me, several other friends, but I just for the, unfortunately, I just couldn't locate it. Otherwise, I'd have loved to show that. Anyway, so, and then after that, we met in conferences, visited but unfortunately, you know, I've never somehow managed to collaborate with Deepak. I think Deepak or Musan said, uh, in, in the sense of writing a paper with Deepak, I came very close to. I remember, I don't know whether you remember this thing about Bethel lattice back to back, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it never got published. So anyway, so, and then I guess after the high TC uh, discovery, I somehow moved deep into an H cross non-zero land, whereas uh, Mustan said and Deepak, Move deep. Mustan Sir used to do H cross non zero earlier, but they moved deeper into H cross equal to zero land. So, kind of our interactions, scientific interactions, kind of decreased. But anyway, so, but it's been wonderful to been, have your friendship for uh, so many years. And it's really amazing for me to see all the um, students that you've produced and their, how well they are all doing. So, you know, I mean, Indian statistical physics community owes uh, enormous amounts to both of you. So, yeah, I mean, I hope I have the good fortune of enjoying your friendship for many, many more years to come. And, uh, you know, if we, I hope if circumstances were different, this would have been an in-person conference that would have given each, each of you a big hug, but uh, I have to um, make do with this. I don't know how many of you have familiar with this Vulcan greeting. It says, <laughs> live long and prosper. 
<laughs> both uh, Mustan Sir and Deepak and your families live long and prosper. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Krish, I just wanted to add, you mentioned uh, that I, you know, I was good at experiment or doing some experiments at IIT Kanpur, but there was a very good reason for that. You know, the infrared uh, uh, spectroscopy lab was the only building that was air conditioned. <laughs> 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 and then another phrase that you used to add, God willing and all living. <laughs> and that, that I picked up from my English teacher at school. Yeah. Yeah, and one day he did die. I mean, sorry. But but Mustan said. The other solution was to go to library in Kanpur IIT, which right. is what I chose when I used to be in Kanpur IIT. Ah, okay, okay. Right. <laughs> so great uh, HRK for again bringing back. I think when you talk about these days, many, many things come back to the yes. mind and it's really wonderful. Uh, so there's such nice aspects of both the gentlemen that we are, so it's the 70th year we are celebrating today. So the next person whom I am asking, going to ask to talk is Bikash. Bikash, okay. are you there? Yeah. So. Yeah. Hi. Okay. So I will not talk about EIFR or IIT connections at all because I do not have that. But I mean, yeah, Mustan Sir and Deepak has been role model in such. Bikash, can you turn your screen a little bit because we are seeing. Ah. Okay, okay. Yeah, now, now this is perfect. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Mustansir and Deepak has been role model for Celestial Physics for quite some time, to the students for sure, and also to our colleagues, I mean, to us and so on, to their colleagues. Uh, but I will try, I mean, uh, don't laugh, I mean, I will try to measure their performances. And uh, in a scientific way, now, in science, I mean, in statistical physics, we study models like Heisen models, Heisenberg models, and none are role uh, models, but they are there. And we study them, or grow with them. Similarly, then BTW model, Manna model, I don't know whether Manna is here and so on, and I will have to come to that soon. Now, what do we do in statistical physics? is uh, that we look for the distribution, mostly uh, distribution that it is not uniform, is the main quantity I mean, uh, of, uh, I mean, investigation. I mean, either clusters are not same in size and someone is going to span the whole system <coughs> or percolate or something like that and so on. Or avalanches. Not all avalanches, fortunately, are of same size and so on. And if you look at social scientists, they do the same thing, but they study inequalities. They call inequalities. And I would say they have some advantage in defining many things which we actually didn't consider earlier. One thing they do is that, I mean, for example, uh, income <coughs> wealth inequality is very common, what they do is to first define the low range function. What is that? In the x-axis, you have the fraction of people from zero to one. I mean, you have the fraction of people after you have ordered everybody from, say, sequentially, something like from poorest to the richest I'm going, and on the y-axis, their cumulative wealth of, for those fractions, the cumulative wealth. If everybody would be equal, everybody would have similar wealth, same wealth, then the line would be a diagonal one. The low-end function would be a diagonal one, I mean, equality line. But what happens is that it is not, and it is a car one, and it is a nonlinear one. And the gap between this equality line and the low-end function is the Gini function, I mean, Gini coefficient. And most of the economists study inequality in terms of Gini, which is an average quantity. There is a new one, since Lorentz function is a uh, linear <coughs> function, you can have a fixed point measure, and that we call K-index. And K-index gives 
if some uh, some uh, some country has the index 0.8 that means 20 percent people have got 80 percent wealth i mean somehow prior to 100 years back somehow found then in europe it is like going to that but then socialism was not there and uh, came much later and so on anyway then comes a paper which is still in archive by manna by uh, Shomujati Vishwas and myself, and it measures how this Gini coefficient, I mean, in self-organized critical models like BTW model or uh, Manna model, you have various avalanches. And you finally, you come to a situation when this is self-organized, where probably the distribution becomes power. But before that, I mean, the distributions are studied. So you can also study the Gini coefficient and the K coefficient. And you find that as the system approaches the critical point, uh, the self-organized critical point, the Gini and K becomes remarkably identical. The value of them, which is to begin with, their I mean, equality is far away from Gini is zero, K is 0.5, but they become equal and about the value is universally, whether it is BTW model, which has a different uh, critical point, I mean, average height, or uh, uh, Manna model, uh, another height. If you take uh, Edwards Wilkinson model, it will have another uh, quantity. But remarkably, the inequality in terms of Gini and K becomes universal at the, as you approach the critical point. If that is so, uh, one can measure the performances of the performances. Everybody is trying to go to their self-organized critical <laughs> limit, it looks like. And I tried to find some of the scientists like Deepak. I mean, it is already published. Deepak's uh, data is actually available in Google Scholar. Unfortunately, I couldn't get Mutansi's data on uh, Google Scholar. So, Deepak's data says you can. I mean, his all papers are not getting equal citations. Not anybody is get there that way. And it looks like the self-organized critical point should have been. I mean, if he would have reached a self-organized critical point, his uh, number should have been 0.86. But his point, his value is G, Gini coefficient or K coefficient are close to 0.8. It says that not only Deepak uh, has to work much higher, uh, much more, and of course continue beyond 70 years, of course, and he has to go to 0.86 to reach his own self-organized critical point. He is still uh, a bit below. What I'm trying to not to tell is that reaching 0.86 by me, is no way saying anything. It is saying that my level has been reached. But Deepak's level, it looks like, has not been reached. So that's the thing. I, I, I would like to uh, tell that these data are published. And I, I think an interesting paper is that all self-organized self critical point, I mean, uh, systems have an universal measure in terms of Gini and K index. And uh, that value is about 0.86. And Deepak's citations and papers, I mean, uh, you can see some of the, I mean, we studied also a few novel areas of the other. And they have all gone beyond 0.86, I mean, around 0.86. And uh, so it is, it is remarkable that they do not go much beyond that. Uh, or people cannot go perhaps. But most of us are below. But some has already achieved 0.86, but that doesn't mean that they are role models. But uh, because they have reached their own self-organized critical point. Like BTW uh, reaches at some value of average height or uh, one uh, is, I mean, I, I don't know. BTW in square lattice is probably two points something, one or something. And one is about 0.7 something, I don't remember. They are different, but as you approach the critical point, you will have self-organized critical point, you will have your Gini index 0.86 around. And Deepak is still quite far from that. And so I think we are expecting a lot from you.
Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Vikash, uh, for this sort of very interesting uh, uh, interpretation. And I want to know whether Deepak or Mustansir have to say something right away. Uh, what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> you will work at it. Very good. I'm sorry, uh, I couldn't do the same for Musanshi just because his data is not available in Google. Oh, okay. <laughs> not really. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah. the conclusion is the same. Yeah, I, I, I would. Uh, I will mean, all of you to work hard. There is still a lot to come from both of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> actually, I realized when I was talking that maybe I should share Srikant Shastri's comments now. Because logically and temporally, they actually belong to the same period that uh, HRK and uh, Ram Ramaswamy talked about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the screen with a short letter that Sri Ram Shastri has written. Because apparently, uh, uh, unfortunately, he cannot uh, join. So I will read the letter. Uh, but I will also, uh, in fact, uh, project it so that people can see. Uh, can everybody see what I'm projecting? It's very small. Uh, then uh, let me see whether I can make it big. That is, maybe I will read it. I don't know how to make it big. Uh, it should be possible. It's a Word document. One second. Give me a time. <laughs> Give me a minute. I should be able to. Doesn't, con doesn't control plus work? Well, uh, this is uh, not uh, mm. Windows. No, any M. Isn't that Control Plus should work? Oh, Control Plus should work? Ah. No, it's on the other way. Normal more. Yeah. Well, now I know what to do. Okay? Yeah, don't make it full screen. It was better. It is full screen, actually. But. Uh, it is hard. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's better. Is it okay? All right. So he first begins by saying that I thank the organizers for uh, uh, this Mac is not very good. Okay. I thank the organizers for asking me to present a message on the occasion of 17th birthday <laughs> and, uh, of reminiscences of our early interaction. So he says that he first met Mustansir at TIFR around 1976 December. I was wrapping up my PhD and he was starting out as a postdoc in the theory group. Deepak came a bit later, perhaps 1977-78. By then, uh, I had moved to Hyderabad. A little later, all three of us overlapped when I returned to TIFR in 1982 and were together until 1987 September. I did interact a fair bit with Deepak and enjoyed those interactions very much. Deepak was already at that time an awe-inspiring colleague. The awe came from his speed and precision of thinking. I should add that his speed of expression was awesome too. I would usually struggle to understand the nuances of his complex arguments delivered at high speed. After thinking long, I would often give up since it was clear that he was miles ahead of where I was in most discussions. Perhaps this is the reason we never published anything together. However, I followed in detail his influential work on directed uh, percolation, lattice animals, and related an topics during those years, which he reported in wonderful blackboard seminars. Mustansin and I were more entangled. We worked together on an interesting project that arose from an interesting discussion meeting at INSA in Delhi. Masao Suzuki spoke about Trotter's formula and of its use to represent quantum systems as classical systems in one higher dimension. This is a discrete time version of path integrals, which accomplish the same goal, but has the advantage that the classical systems are easier to simulate as well as to visualize. Our paper, D-dimensional Hubbard model as a D plus one dimensional classical problem, Mustansir Burma and uh, uh, B.S. Shastri, published in Physics Letters uh, A with 61 volume in 1977. What's in this, we calculated this. We, uh, yeah, that's what he says. And written and published at a rapid clip by any standard. It was satisfying since we had found the best way to perform quantum Monte Carlo for fermionic models in one dimension. 
we came up with the so called checkerboard decomposition that dominated the field for many years it would have been more inf even more influential if we had managed to do any numerical implementation of that proposal 5 years later other perform others performed this kind of numerics using the checkerboard decomposition for related models with interesting results it quite another matter that the authors forgot to refer to our work for quite a while deepak and mustansir meanwhile formed a formidable combination they had much in common in terms of physical tests they worked and published together and with their students and postdocs they helped create a healthy and thriving school of statistical mechanics in india talking of speed i should mention that one of my first impressions of mustansir and deepak was the speed of walking in the long corridor of the third floor at tifr mustansir and deepak raced ahead often together while others ambled on they were people with a mission to get to the cafeteria to return in the shortest time interval in the cafeteria too they were focused on physics topics all the time this contrasted with the usual convention followed by most including myself where lunches and coffee breaks were meant to be leisurely they were usually accompanied by detailed analysis of the latest cricket scores and other such important matters finally a few words on the books i continue to read from time to time a beautiful collection of kabir's poems so kindly gifted to me by deepak several years ago thanks again deepak i cannot thank mustansir enough for gifting me a massive book on the history of tifr and dr homi baba he carried it hand carried it to the us for presenting to me anyone else would have mailed it thanks again mustansir and thanks to shri ram for such words that reach the heart you know they are spoken from the heart and they reach the heart so i thank on everybody's behalf shri ram also and i think it kind of talks about one part of the period of deepak and uh, mustansir and uh, now i will uh, before i move on to the other somewhat younger statistical physicists to speak about deepak and mustansir i thought i will use up the one odd person out and i will ask anuradha to express uh, her thoughts because i know that they are not about so much about statistical mechanics but about uh, deepak's prowess at least the and also mustansir i have no idea but uh, idea their involvement in education so anuradha recently retired from bombay university as the head of the department and uh, she is a particle theorist so i invite now anuradha to give her thoughts anuradha please go ahead thank you rohini and thank you to this kavita uh, and chakumbra for uh, inviting me it is an honor and a privilege to be part of this session and to get this opportunity to convey my wishes to two very special persons while they are reaching this milestone year in their lives my acquaintance with both professor ustansi barma and professor deepak dhai is rather distant and relatively new as compared to most of the people present here there has never been any overlap either at institutional level or in terms of research interest with either of them what i do share with them is a deep conviction to contribute to the cause cause of education and teaching learning process much has already been said about their academic achievements their brilliance their physics so i will only speak about the facet that i have had the good fortune good fortune to witness which is their passion and dedication to education and teaching my association with professor barma started hardly 8 years ago uh, when i invited him to be a member of the board of management of the department of physics at university of mumbai the department had just become autonomous in 2013 this was and as luck would have it this milestone coincided with my first term as head of the department beginning of the first term with zero administrative experience and sub zero interest in administration i took up the job as a challenge to set up an institution within a <clears throat> already existing rather rigid university institution which was university of mumbai i had a team of uh, very young fresh uh, faculty members and what i realized was that they needed role models to inspire and enthuse them and therefore i started out 
by writing to some very high profile people to be our, our board members and to my surprise all of them agreed so we started our board of management with dr kakodkar anil kakodkar as the head, as the chairperson and with professor uh, chitre and professor barma as the perits experts that was my first interaction with the professor barma he was already director of gfr and must have been extremely busy but still he agreed to take up this responsibility and at the same time professor deepak dhar also joined uh, accepted our invitation to be a member of the academic board of the department uh, professor dhar was as i said a director of tfr at that time and there was this huge gap between the systems at tfr and uh, university of mumbai in spite of that and in spite of his busy schedule he always found, found time to attend the board meetings and believe me some of them extended up to 6 7 hours sometimes during his uh, brief association which was about two and a half years only he made everlasting impact on the department and the university in two ways uh, and i'm sure he is guessing what are the two ways i'm going to talk about the first was uh, one was his help and guidance in drafting the vision and mission of the department it was an autonomous department and we had to we started out by drafting a vision of the department under the leadership of all these eminent people and the draft was a collective effort of course by all the faculty members and all the board members but professor barma along with professor prabodh ganguly he spent a lot of time uh, fine tuning the this draft right from the content to the language to the presentation he spent a lot of time on this and the department as a whole and i am personally uh, very thankful to him uh, for this and for his inspiring presence and his insightful suggestions during those formative years of the autonomous department the second contribution that professor bama made was the proposing the concept of mumbai area physics meet which basically was his brain child alone the idea was to organize uh, theme based workshops with lectures in the morning by experts and poster sessions by research scholars from all over bombay colleges universities institutions in the afternoon and the idea was to connect these students who sometimes don't do not have access to a good uh, rich, rich research environment expose them to uh, experts and uh, try to forge new collaborations and professor barma took the leadership role in this he brought together the main five main physics department of the city that is tfr it bombay drc uh university department and cebs and uh, together we started this uh, uh, series of meetings called mumbai area physics meet the first was organized by us in the uh, campus the department and cebs second was in tfr then there were meeting uh, organized by colleges and so on and there are many students who have actually benefited from these meetings because they got to first of all present their work and then they were able to start new collaborations with people in these institutions uh thank you sir again for that also for starting this idea uh apart from his advisory role professor barma was always always ready to deliver a physics talk which as you all of know are always an intellectual treat for students and teachers alike i wish to thank you sir for uh, your patient mentorship during those formative years and all the inspiring interactions and i wish you a very peaceful and meaningful life ahead thank you about professor deepak dhar or deepak as he insists on being called as whatever i say will be just a drop in an ocean uh, i have been associated with him for just 10 years or so uh, of course when i had heard a lot about the brilliant senior at university of allahabad and iit kanpur both the places he preceded me by about 10 years or so and we had heard stories about him also from the friends and colleagues in tfr and iit bombay i after i moved to bombay uh, university but my first active interaction with the professor dhar was uh, about 10 years back uh, when i organized a science academy refresher course on statistical mechanics along with him so i was the coordinator and he was the director uh, he didn't have to do anything as a director uh, this course was held at gcse but the enthusiasm with which he helped in the organization was simply mind blowing right from writing the proposal to writing the uh, what is this called the closer report project closer report uh, at every stage he was uh, very minutely uh, 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 taking interest in everything 
this attention to the minute test of the details, either in physics or in any other matters. I can say I have not seen in anyone other than my late supervisor, Satish Joglekar, and who probably also would not have matched in other than physics matters. Uh, Deepak there was simply uh, outstanding and it came to details. His dedication to the cause was evident from the fact that he was the only person in the whole refresher course, including the participants, who attended all the sessions on all the days. He was sitting there from morning till evening with his insightful comments in every lecture, sometimes at the behind the speakers also. But yes, he was there. I myself was very nervous teaching in his presence, but all in all, it was a very great experience. After the course, all participants gave extremely good feedback. And there was this one faculty member from Institute of Chemical Technology, he's a professor there, assistant, assistant professor, who wrote an email in superlative. It was all about Professor Dhar, Professor Dhar, and Professor Dhar. <coughs> I actually read that email on the 65th birthday, and therefore I'll not embarrass him further by reading it again. <laughs> We have many such emails, but this one is uh, something I, I just can never forget. I saved it. Later, we organized another course. This time, it was on quantum mechanics inside the university campus. And again, each one of us, from the youngest to the senior most faculty members, were simply awed by the energy, dedication, and knowledge of Professor Deepak Thar. He has also contributed, apart from these courses, uh, and in other courses also that I organized, he, he was always there to give a special lecture or contribute in some way. Apart from the refresher courses, he was also a member of our academic board. And he took very active uh, part in the academic board meetings and uh, keen interest in upgradation of the syllabus and structure of the MSc course. In the end, I just want to say that there are many, many brilliant scientists in India and all over the world, but not many have many of them have this kind of passion and dedication for uplifting the teaching standards in the less uh, fortunate colleges and institutions. And I'm very fortunate to have worked with two such people. And I look, look up to both of you sir, as role models as I'm beginning my second innings this year. I am where you, where you were when I met you. And I, I look up to you as role model. And I hope to get many more opportunities to collaborate with you on the common matters that is close to our hearts, which is teaching and learning and education in general. Thank you very much. And many, many happy returns of the day, whenever it was. Thank you. Thank you, Anuradha. Thank you, Anuradha. Thanks, Anuradha, for with these very heartfelt words. And uh, now uh, we will go back to statistical mechanics people. But I should warn you that we have still seven people to go and then I have a few more requests uh, of other people. So we will strictly have to try to be within five to six minutes. Okay. So the next person I'm now inviting is uh, Professor Debashish Chaudhary. So Debashish, are you there? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, uh, it's a, can you, am I audible? You are very much audible. Yeah. Uh, so it's a you know privilege to know both Mustan Sin and uh, Deepak uh, personally. And uh, when I was invited to speak in this uh, particular session, uh, I felt honored. So as uh, many people have already said that Deepak and Mustan Sin have been road models for scientists in general and uh, statistical physicists in India in particular. And I'll stick to five minutes time that have been <laughs> sort of now going to be strictly followed. Uh, I met Deepak for the first time, uh, you know, uh, more than five years ago. Uh, Deepak may not remember. So that was 1985 summer. Uh, I was uh, doing my first postdoc in Germany. Uh, Deepak was spending one year in Paris, if I recall correctly. And, uh, you know, we both attended uh, this uh, meeting on fractals. So this was probably the first major uh, conference on fractals organized by Gene Stanley and Nicole Ostrowski uh, in Karjis. And if I'm not wrong, uh, Manju was also there. Uh, so Deepak may correct me. So uh, you know, that's the first time I met Deepak. And the interesting thing, I'm narrating this story because you know that is the day that I became Deepak's fan. 
Deepak had done this wonderful work. Deepak being a very thorough gentleman and you know, a very soft spoken person, he was not you know, beating his trumpet. But then you know, in that conference, of course, there were many people who were saying that they have done things for the first time. Uh, Deepak didn't have to say this. Then it was Michael Schlesinger, uh, who was a collaborator of Elliot Montreal also. Uh, and at that time he was at Naval Research Lab. Uh, he stood up and he said very clearly, I still remember to this day, he said that the concept of fracton, the spectral dimension, these concepts have been introduced by Deepak Dhar. And then I saw uh, that Deepak didn't have to say it and everybody accepted it. And this great work was done by this young, you know, he was very young at the time, a man from India. So I felt very proud of uh, him being an Indian and became sort of, you know, he became one of my role models uh, from that day. Uh, so that was the first time I met Deepak. Of course, after that, we have met many times and I'll narrate another story a little later. Uh, as far as Mustan City is concerned, if I again recall correctly, first time I met him was uh, you know, when I was at JNU for five years as a faculty member from 87 to 92. Uh, Ram already mentioned that uh, Mustan Sir came and I think that is the first time I met Mustan Sir. And then, uh, of course, uh, you know, I had other interactions with him at various conferences. And then we did some work on TASIP, uh, where there were some disorder of a particular type, which gives rise to condensation phenomena. And Mustan Sir and his student Gautam Tripathi had worked on another kind of disordered uh, model, uh, TASIP models. And it so happened that I was actually uh, one of the examiners of Gautam Tripathi's thesis. Uh, but unfortunately, I never wrote any paper with uh, Mustan Sir, although I discussed uh, many times. And in fact, I uh, have been a guest uh, for dinner also at uh, Mustan Sir's residence and have known his family. And uh, on this particular thing, and I would like to say something more, that I was also invited on another occasion to a restaurant and uh, Mustan Sir, Rashida and Hussein, they uh, were all there uh, and I was uh, you know, the guest with them. So after dinner on Rashida's recommendation, we went to a you know, place close to Crawford Market. It was an ice cream parlor. And Not in my sure. life, that is the day I have tested largest number of ice creams. <laughs> Rashida said that that is the place she used to go in her you know, younger days. I still remember uh, that particular you know, incident. Uh, and now coming back to Deepak, you know, I shared a room with Deepak uh, in uh, Kolkata at the Ramakrishna Mission Institute of Culture in 1991, December. That was the first StatFIS meeting, organized, uh, first Kolkata StatFIS meeting organized there. And uh, of course, every day after lunch, you know, I, I, of, we were served uh, Mishti Doi, the sweet curd uh, of Kolkata, uh, but that was only 100 grams and I was not satisfied with 100 grams. So every day after lunch, and I used to cross the street and go to the other side to Ganguram to have 200 grams more of Mishti Doi. Deepak used to go with me every day. One day, right after I finished this 200 grams of uh, Mishti Doi there, he said, let's go to the next shop. Next shop was a toy shop. We entered there. It had all fancy toys. And so they thought we are going to buy one of those. Uh, so they came and Deepak then said eh, that he, we are looking for, uh, the Deepak was looking for Kancha. So, you know, this uh, glass marbles. Uh, so they were very annoyed. Uh, and, you know, he thought that the below the dignity, he said, hum nahi rakte hai. Uh, we don't sell such things. So Deepak would not give us. Deepak said, can you tell us where one can buy those kanchas? So, you know, he said, you have to go to slums. So slums, and then again, Deepak said, you know, which way? <laughs> so he showed, he showed a way, you know, how to go to the slums. So Deepak and I walked... <coughs> Is half a kilometer in that slum and reached a shop and uh, the guy said that yes we buy uh, sorry we sell uh, kanchas but today we have run out of stock we don't have and it will come after a week or something like that so one may be wondering why was Deepak looking for kanchas and he was he's not going to play with these kanchas it turns out that you know he was interested in doing experiments an experiment on sand pile model and in this case he wanted to do this experiment with these kanchas but that day his dream was not fulfilled. Maybe you know, on some later date, <laughs> it was fulfilled. <laughs> uh, I had many other occasions, interesting, uh, you know, uh, stories I can narrate. But main thing is that I have learned so much uh, by interacting with both of them. Although I have never written papers with them, of course, one common link, another common link was that you know, students who have done 
uh, MSc here in, and I have taught them StatMec. At least two of them have done very well working with uh, Deepak as the you know, PhD students. One is uh, Sabhap Sanjeev Sabhapanti, the other is Tridip Sadhu. And in the reverse direction, uh, two of Mustansi's students, their thesis, I had the, you know, I was fortunate to be examiners of those uh, two thesis. One was Gautam Tripathi, other was Shakuntala Chatterjee. So um, before I end, I would like to wish both of you a very happy and healthy uh, life with your families and you continue to be creative, as creative as you have been and continue inspiring uh, not only juniors like me who are also going to retire in, you know, very soon, but also many more generations of young physicists. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, maybe I can just add a small footnote. After our stay in France, we stayed for one month in Germany and we stayed in the same flat in which Debashi had been one day earlier. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Mm. So wonderful, remember, Yeah. No, yes. so, sorry, I remember uh, one incident where Devashish and I were sharing a guest house. And you know, nowadays they give you these water bottles which are so hard to open. I just tried and tried for 10 minutes, then I just took it to him. But he opened it in a shot. <laughs> 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 Mm. The wonderful, I, I particularly want to thank you for the wonderful stories of the Kanchas. So <laughs> I think uh, this was a lovely story. And uh, let's now uh, move to the next person on my list. And that's Sanjay, uh, whose name has already appeared in the discussion. So Sanjay, ah, yeah, I see you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, thanks, Rohini. Uh, uh, I want to start off by uh, thanking the organizers, Sridhar Chakuntala, uh, uh, for, for sort of, uh, inviting me to this session. Uh, both Deepak and Roh, uh, Mosansi have really sort of been uh, uh, important figures, uh, not just in Indian statistical physics, but also in my personal growth as a physicist. And I really would like to sort of uh, wish you both uh, uh, a fantastic, uh, healthy, happy life ahead with lots and lots of beautiful physics uh, to come. I am sure there's many more beautiful papers to be written by both of you. And uh, I, I, I first met uh, uh, Mustansir and Deepu 35 years ago. You look just the same as you did at that time, and, and I, I hope it's going to be the same after another 35 years also. Uh, I, 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 let me just sort of go back in, uh, uh, in time. I, I, I came back from the US in 87, and uh, shortly thereafter, I went to this uh, DAE meeting Bhopal, in Bhopal, uh, and, and that's when I first met Mustansir. I gave a talk. He was very kind. He, he sort of came me after the talk we discussed a lot he was very interested in these phase ordering problems uh, and uh, i think also invited me then to visit tifr on a tpsc circuit we used to have this tpsc circuit at that time and uh, shortly thereafter i came to tifr that's when i met deepak and uh, uh, i mean uh, both deepak and musanchi seemed very senior at, at that point of time but i realized that that was just sort of my skewed perspective i was 25 and I guess Deepak and Mustansi would have been 35 at that time. So, 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 so we were all a long way from there now, I guess, yeah. But uh, uh, at, at the very same time, I also met Rohini, I remember, in, in, in TFR. And uh, Pal Bhak was there. He was uh, visiting and talking about self-organized criticality. And it was just a fantastic environment uh, in TFR uh, for statistical physics, primarily due to Deepak and Mustansi, I mean. Uh, the sort of uh, passion, their commitment, their sort of uh, love of physics was so also apparent from every sort of uh, 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 discussion one had with them. I, I said for about a week in TFR, it was a very, very sort of stimulating period and uh, 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 sort of came already to respect Mustansir and Deepak a great deal at that point of time. Over the years, I have continued to meet them and, and grown with every meeting. I have learned so much from both Mustansir and Deepak. I have uh, sort of, uh, they have been referees for my PhD students. I have served as referee for their PhD students. With Mustansir, I had a particularly interesting interaction on these 
cast like uh, cast in the correlation functions and uh, non polar behaviors in the structure factors i think that's something that was also first sort of uh, uh, discovered and uh, which has become sort of an important substream of of uh, uh, of uh, research in that area so so it, it's really been fantastic uh, uh, over the years and i i really sort of uh, uh, am grateful for the opportunity to interact with both mustard sir and deepak and wish you the very best in the years to come i just wanted to sort of end with the last statement and, and that is that uh, i i recall reading that baba nehru had uh, this uh, idea uh, that uh, tfr would sort of uh, i mean uh, some people asked him whether it was going to become an ivory tower and stuff like that and i i believe baba said that uh, no not at all as a matter of fact the students who come out of here will enrich indian academia in so many ways uh, uh, i i i can i can you start to tell you and in that sense i think both deepak and uh, musansu are living in embodiments of baba's uh, dream uh, because their students uh, have formed a very rich fabric of statistical physics all across india and uh, that is the most sort of uh, lasting tribute uh, lasting contribution uh, to to physics and statistical physics in india so so i i uh, again wish you a very very happy uh, uh, life ahead a very uh, physics full life ahead and i look forward to many many more meetings in the years to come huh? thanks this deepak thanks for sponsor <laughs> thanks <Roy. laughs> yeah, for let you <laughs> Thanks, Thanks very, very much. much for keeping to the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Deepak, we cannot hear you. Thank you. Very kind of you, Mr. Sanjay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this was wonderful. It said. So now we go to the next person. That's Aragya. Aragya, are you still around? Aragya. Yes, uh, I'm around. <coughs> Please. Yeah, I am really uh, very indebted to both of you. Honored to be in this uh, meeting uh, because I am I do not belong in this uh, statistics community as such, but I consider myself as uh, students of both of you because I was initiated to research by uh, the actually three of you. All three of you are statistics uh, persons: uh, Bikas Chakravarti, Mustan Sir, and uh, Deepak. so it's really amazing that it's 36 years since that time that we are uh, still discussing uh, about your contributions and uh, what you have done to indian science so i actually was a master student when ustan sir uh, came to calcutta and i i was in professor chakravarti's room and because they introduced me to him we were working on some some statistic problems traveling salesman problem those days that was popular <clears throat> and i had some some something worked out and then uh, mustan sir said okay i will not see your calculations but then within probably an hour or so mustan sir asked me what my results are and then he showed me his results and obviously he has already got it so that was kind of awe inspiring at that time and being an msc student i found that okay if, if this is the level of research then of course uh, if this is the standard then it is uh, well i have a long long way to go but uh, they were so nice and uh, so mustan sir invited me later to visit tfr and i met deepak the next year there and uh, we worked on a problem together there i'm sorry my phone is ringing so let me switch it off These are these modern phones. Yeah. Okay. I could stop them. So. <laughs> so. But anyway. <clears throat> so then. Uh, then I actually worked with uh, all three of them, and uh, and eventually the work was published. So uh, the, uh, the the next, I think I I was not in TFR, and I I was not in Statmec community. I moved to Condensed Matter uh, uh, with. Uh, Uh, Krishna Murthy, TVR, and company, Rahul, and so then, uh, but they used to come to IIC quite often, and uh, I remember uh, discussing and uh, walking long distances with uh, with them in the IIC campus, and they would not let you feel that you are a student. I mean, they would just talk to you like a 
like a co-scientist, another scientist. So one would feel really uh, amazed at their simplicity. And, uh, and, and in that process, actually, they kept on asking questions as to what we were doing. And uh, I learned so much from both of them. Uh, I still remember Deepak asked me a question I could not answer. I didn't know the answer to. It was on Hubbard model. And then I went back to, uh, to I think, Ramakrishnan and asked him the next day. And he said that if you could solve it, then you will not be here now. So now I realize that how deeply they, uh, they thought about these problems. I mean, it's just that, that they knew physics. And... Uh, it doesn't uh, have to be in their field. <clears throat> uh, incidentally, Mustansi was actually my thesis examiner, Indian thesis examiner. And uh, he came and took a viva. And at the end of the viva, he asked me that now that you are a, going to be a PhD, you should know some basic physics. And he asked me, <clears throat> uh, how do you relate a refractive index uh, with... Uh, with permittivity and permeability. Mm -hmm. That I forgot at that time and I was fumbling. <laughs> and Mustansi was much more embarrassed than, uh, than myself. And PR uh, and uh, Krishnamurti were probably uh, really very unhappy with me because <laughs> 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 So, <laughs> nevertheless, Mustansi himself answered it. And uh, the square root of epsilon and mu. And then, uh, <clears throat> okay, so then since I am now a thesis examiner in most, in many places, and I go and ask this question <laughs> every <single> day. <laughs> so this is the benchmark for your PhD, you see. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it was wonderful. I, 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 I still remember how embarrassed Mustansi was when I could not answer the question properly. <laughs> 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 I think my next meeting with Mustansi was in New Jersey. Mustansi was extremely kind that he came to Lebowitz meeting and uh, he actually stayed with me in my house. And I was really very happy that a person of his stature uh, came and stayed with me. And we had wonderful discussions uh, at home and we had dinner together and so on. He spent a night with us and really uh, wonderful. <coughs> So, uh, uh, so then let us see what, uh, I think Deepak I kept, kept on meeting here and there and uh, the last meeting with Deepak was at the Chandigarh airport. Do you remember Deepak? Uh, yes. Quite. Yeah. <laughs> this was, I think it's 2019 or so. I still have uh, to visit you, but I have, there was COVID and so on. No, 2018 then it should be, yeah. Sometimes at that, uh, uh, around that time. Yeah, no, I didn't reach yeah. it yet. Yeah. So that, uh, and then we, we had about, about 45 minutes together and Deepak still is Deepak and he kept on asking me as to what I'm working <laughs> on. And, and, and I now, of course, remember uh, that I, I know the formula for refractive index, so I'm not scared. So that is uh, <laughs> something I can, I can guarantee now. But uh, I actually benefited once from my association or at least acquaintance to Deepak. Uh, this was in uh, New Jersey when uh, I had an office uh, and uh, in the, at uh, NEC and then the person I was sharing with, uh, with was somebody called Chao Tang. Now this, of course, Tang was already very famous at that time and uh, Tang was uh, visibly quite unhappy to share with a completely unknown person from, from India and office, right? When he is a famous person and I am just a postdoc and uh, Tang, I think, was not very happy that he had to share it with such an unknown person. But he, of course, was a very nice person, he never expressed his, uh, his uh, uh, <coughs> feelings, but... Uh, a few days later, he came and asked me, are you the same Tarabdar who has a paper with Deepak Bhar and Ustan Sir Barma? I said, well, yes, I have. I am that person. And from that day onwards, I think his uh, view about me <laughs> and sharing an office with me, that, that the feelings have uh, changed dramatically. So thank you, Deepak, and thank you, Mustan Sir, for allowing me to share an office with, uh, <laughs> with such a distinguished person.
nevertheless, I I really am uh, very very fortunate that uh, my interactions with Statnic community had been very minimal. But uh, Satto, for example, is another person I knew from colleges, and uh, and of course he also visited me in New Jersey. I stayed. Uh, I stayed with you. <laughs> you stayed with me exactly. Yes. So in the footsteps of uh, Mustansir also. So I mean, it's really wonderful that uh, I think Krishnamurti also came, but he was my super. He was he had a long association. <laughs> and, uh, that was different. <laughs> that was different. But I am really grateful to both all of you, Mustansir, Deepak, that you have remembered me. And given me the chance to to know what statnet is a little bit. I'm actually not afraid to to face a course. I mean, or to take a course on statnet or whatever, or face a person coming from statnet or a problem coming from statnet. So that's something that I learned from both of you. And apart from from being such wonderful human being. And of course, that one question I have to ask to all PhD students. Uh, that, uh, so that's so that's that's my experience with these people. I can go on and on and on, but uh, I have to stop. And uh, I think thank wonderful you so much. Wonderful stories, Arugya. Wonderful stories, both Very with nice. <laughs> both with the gentleman you shared the office with. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I could I have been thrown out, you see. <laughs> wonderful I story. Paper with these two. <laughs> yeah, so you have to do some good karma in your life, no? This was your That's good true. karma. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so now yeah. <laughs> we return to students, real students, I think. So the next three people, no, no, sorry, Shrikant is also there. So I will ask Hari, Peter, and Shrikant in that order. So oh, Hari. Oh, I need to <laughs> okay. Yes, she can. One moment, she can't is saying something. To go soon, so if you don't mind, I'll. Um, no, I I need to go soon. Uh, oh, so, so then, want do you want first. to speak first? Please do. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I apologize for that. Um, yeah. So I'll keep uh, <clears throat> my remarks brief. Uh, uh, much has already been said. So Deepak and Mustansu have been, uh, without any exaggeration whatsoever, uh, pillars of the Indian statistical physics community for the last few decades, uh, both in terms of their own efforts in pursuing research at the highest level, uh, uh, but also uh, in, in the form of creating a school and training so many of the successful and prominent members of our community today. Uh, the METIF are an international mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, though I have had a lot of overlap of collaboration, uh, the world have benefited over the years from their presence and meetings across the country and from interactions with them um, in, uh, in, in several other ways. In particular, in the days I visited here, were often when the primary agenda was not statistical physics, it was always a welcome break. To find some time to discuss science with them. Uh, uh, apart from their status as scientists, that Deepak and Mustansir apart, is also their extreme generosity, uh, friendliness, and dignity with which uh, they interact with uh, uh, other colleagues, especially younger colleagues. Uh, and this is a quality that they both share and uh, which are broadly appreciated. Uh, as an example, in recent months, I have been in contact with Mustansir uh, in the context of uh, a, a thesis of a fellow, uh, student of mine. And it has been a pleasure to witness how Mustansir has been engaging in discussion with the student with a lot of caring and curiosity, which is much appreciated. Um, now, um, <clears throat> so people have, you have one, one story to share. Uh, some years ago, when I was giving a talk at a conference, I made some statement, and, uh, but added, but I've not thought deeply about it. And I was about to go on, uh, but there was some chuckling uh, coming from the audience. So I looked up from my slides and I gathered that the source of the merriment was Deepak saying in response, why don't you? <laughs> 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 The occasion apart, uh, this is something that we owe Deepak and Mustansir, that they have been prodding and encouraging us to think more deeply. For this, I'm thankful, and I'm happy to join all the fellow admirers in expressing my appreciation and thanks.
Um, so both Mustan Sir uh, and Deepak have in the last few years have sort of moved on beyond their years of uh, responsibilities and have been enjoying a second honeymoon period. Uh, I see this Mustan um, in more uh, contact uh, lately, uh, but no doubt uh, Deepak is also having a wonderful time. Uh, I hope they enjoy this period of quiet and doing what they like doing for a long time and uh, wish them uh, many more years of thinking deeply and sharing the joys uh, with us. Thank you, uh, Mustan Sir and Deepak for uh, the wonderful uh, uh, <coughs> exemplars you've been of how statistical physics should be done. Thank you. Thank you, Shrikant. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Shriram. Uh, Shrikant. Now it's Hari and Peter. You can decide your order. Peter, you want to go first? You're my senior. And you're <laughs> second after uh, Satya. Uh, that's okay, Hari. You go first. Okay, thank you. So good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks to 3D Band organizers for uh, uh, inviting me to this. It's uh, very nice uh, after almost 20 to 26 years, uh, you know, connecting back to the statistical community. And uh, so I was thinking, uh, you know, uh, what should I say, uh, you know? And, and then I thought, what are the some of the things I, I learned during my PhD? Uh, you know, which I still use it in my everyday work. Uh, so I, I also, so I came up with, you know, three, three, three things. And uh, I also want, would like to acknowledge uh, Professor uh, David Mukamal in this occasion with whom I did a PhD, sorry, postdoc uh, for this, for the same, you know, uh, reasons. So I and uh, my <laughs> friend Aga Sarali, we joined uh, you know, uh, theoretical physics group in 1990. And uh, both of us want to do StatMac and uh, both uh, Deepak and Mustansir were available. And uh, so, but after one year, Mustansir went to Oxford uh, for a sabbatical. So both of us, uh, you know, ended up uh, working with uh, Deepak. So those times, uh, the, the way we start our PhD was do a reading course in, uh, you know, the, the two volumes of, uh, uh, fellas book on probability theory and applications and already Satya had uh, you know Satya and Peter had done both the volumes and that was a kind of bridge bar and so we started and uh, we completed first volume okay that was okay and you know so when it gets started second volume it, we, we sort of you know finding it difficult uh, you know and of course I and Aga used to go and discuss and uh, every day we used to meet Deepak in the afternoon and, and solve all the problems okay <laughs> so and I think if somewhere I gave up after, uh, you know, half of second volume, but that whole, whole uh, reading course was so useful for me that even I went to, you know, data science or any other area working with statisticians, I, I didn't have any difficulty in that, in that subject at all. The second is about, uh, you know, all this literature search, right? All of us do literature search or background search before we start doing problems working on any problems. And these days with so many papers, right? Publications are exponentially increasing. It's very difficult to separ separate good work from bad work. And, and it, just to keep track, it's difficult. And I remember Deepak's amazing capability to see, and even Mustafa said, right, whether a paper is good or not in, in just a couple of minutes. So I'll give an example that when we were uh, doing PhD, that time, you know, the solving icing model in 3D was a kind of a, you know, challenging problem. I don't know it's solved now, uh, but that time it was not solved. And I remember somebody from Pune University, uh, you know, published a preprint in, in archive saying that he solved it. So we downloaded it and, you know, I, I and I, I don't know, Supriya or, or all of us were going through it to proof and see what is it. And Deepak came and just looked at it. And, and I think it's some, you know, last result and it's one mental calculation and said, this is wrong, okay. And, and this cannot be correct. So he has a very, you know, amazing way. Just look at few here and there and, and just decide whether to read this paper or not. And, and, the, and the next thing, uh, you know, uh, I, I learned uh, is all about uh, developing intuitions, you know, and in, in, in not just mathematics, but developing physical intuition around that. So, he, you know, Deepak always used to say, you know, I have this mumbo jumbo argument to explain this. Uh, right. 
our hand waving argument right really call and and most and we we hear it and and uh, you know and as uh, i think shriram shastri said we go back and think about it and and very often you know they give a lot of insight slowly but sometimes they don't give insight at all one one typical example was that you know once you're discussing about uh, what is a random process right and and it, during in, in i think in, in one of those canteen meetings you know during tea and deepak said you know if you see a horse uh, running around in a field randomly for you it may look random but for the horse it is not random okay. yeah, but you know so this is something i i still have not figured out and and the last one is about <coughs> apart from all these right there's both these people and even david were very nice human beings very comfortable to interact and and even you know with their families uh, very good host and you know so one one another quality i learned from all these is this uh, humbleness and humility and and be patient with your uh, with your students right and one example is uh, again that uh, i'll i'll tell uh, that uh, so when we are doing phd uh, deepak got a letter from somebody in argentina okay and he wanted to understand something in relativity and he said there is some ship and you know i i don't remember exactly and deepak called me and i was a junior student and deepak called me and said can you explain this and write a letter to him that time everything was a letter not not an email <laughs> for god sake so i this is a difficult problem for me so i discussed with anirvan and fawad who were you know the high energy physics people who understand this better and wrote to him i thought that's it again he wrote me after 3 4 months again deepak get a letter saying that no i have not understood this you know can you explain it again deepak calls me i said uh, okay we again discussed and wrote after several months again he wrote then i went and asked deepak okay uh, do we still need to uh, explain he said yes i don't know deepak you remember this uh, you know at least uh, you know so i, I remember he, he was sort of you know Uh, telling me that how important it is to be patient with uh, students and uh, you know and be be humble in the field so so these are the few qualities i learned uh, with uh, you know working with deepak mustansar and and david and i still cherish them and i think it 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 helps me in my career so uh, thank you all of you for mentoring and great inspire and inspiring us to do great work and uh, wish uh, you know you uh, wish deepak mustansar and david uh, many more years of uh, active research and uh, one more request is that if any such event is happening please call me and invite me i will at least try to you know join and be a listener okay if i if i get present i i also publish once in a while so i can also talk sometime okay uh, so that's all uh, from my side uh, thank you thanks sir thank you hari so thanks hari and i think peter you are one of the last scheduled uh, speaker now because i have two three more requests and i would like to give them a minute or two each so sorry sure. to hurt you but no no that's problem that's the fate of the first and the last person <laughs> they are the two people who get rushed okay sure thanks rohani uh, so it's uh, almost 5 o'clock here uh, where i where i am and so i'm pulling an all nighter uh, to be with you all and it's a deja vu from my phd days <laughs> <laughs> so uh treat treat ask me to share a few words uh, about my experiences and i'm going to try but uh, i don't even know where to really start with uh, men such as deepak and mustan sir Uh, I am privileged to be a part of this meeting, and uh, that honors uh, Mustansir and Deepak's contributions, both directly and indirectly, through their students in uh, statistical and condensed matter physics. Teachers deserve to receive praise because of their positive contributions to many of our lives. I did my internship in TIFR under Mustansir in 1987. while i was a part of the tifr university and uh, university of pune uh, joint msc program and then i deepak was my thesis advisor uh, from 1988 to 93 and i was his second phd student after satya the training i received under both 
of their mentorship has served me well over all of these years. I watched them tackle problems with logical ease and determination. They guided me and many other students with respect and kindness while challenging us to do our best. Intellectual integrity and hard work was impressed on us. It is difficult to quanti quantify the value of all that I learned from these men during my student days. I have tried to apply this training even today in my everyday work. Wherever I've gone in my life since TIFR, I have always remembered that I had excellent guides in the form of uh, these two teachers, Deepak and Mustansir. Uh, dear Deepak and Mustansir, you taught me, inspired me, guided me, encouraged me, pushed me to do my best. Thank you. I will always be grateful. And I pray that God will bless you in all your future endeavors. I uh, want to thank the organizers uh, for uh, putting up this symposium and for all of their efforts. And I'm really grateful to have been a part of it. Thanks. Thank you very much, Peter. And I didn't Thank realize you. that you were, uh, I mean, I didn't, with these days, you don't know where people are. So <laughs> thanks for pulling an all-nighter. So <laughs> there are a few requests, a few short requests, but I think now I'm going to take the privilege of chair and I'm going to share my own thoughts because these are actually, I would say that my interactions with both Deepak and Mustansir are those of a friend. I mean, that's, uh, I joined TIFR in 1979 and both of them, I don't remember whether Deepak was already formally a fellow or whether he became a fellow after I joined. I don't remember that. Yeah, more or less perhaps at the same time. And then, you know, I must say one thing that both Deepak and Mustansi set such high bars for the visiting fellow in TIFR that poor people like us, you know, mortals who followed had a tough job to follow. <laughs> but it was absolute pleasure to have known them. And I think I have enjoyed a friendship. I have not worked in this area. So I obviously have not had any detailed subject discussions with them. But the, I think one thing I can say for sure that the TIFR of those days you gave a Thursday seminar for particle physics audience. You gave a Friday seminar for the theoretical physics group. So there are many a theoretical physics seminars in which we have all attended together, given together. And I still have one memory of Deepak. And this was when I had just joined EIFR and he was sitting in the back. And there was a particle physicist who was very pleased with the result he had got. It was a result on supersymmetric quantum mechanics. And because of the use of supersymmetry, he had been able to solve some problem exactly. And it was a very nice piece of work, actually. I mean, it was a wonderful piece of work. It was published perhaps in Physical Regulators. And then, you know, he was very happy about the result. So after, just after he finished everything, and then he said, who can figure out, you know, who can guess what the answer would be? He did not quite calculate that Deepak is in the audience. <laughs> and Deepak very lazily from the back said, is it some kind of a hyperbolic function? I think now when I know the subject, I can to some extent understand from what he, what are the reasons why it might have inspired him to say this. But at that time, I was literally, you know, bowled over by just this one sentence. Is this some kind of a hyperbolic function? And I think I met uh, the Rashida right at the wedding. That was my first experience of attending a wedding in Bombay, by the way the big wedding that you had and it was a wonderful they made a wonderful couple i still remember and then the other thing was about what Sri Ram shastri said mustan would said let's go for a quick walk brisk walk that was his word and given the fact that they are both about one and a half times taller than i am their legs are also much longer than mine are and as it is at normal speed i have to run and then when they were about to go to a brisk walk, then there was no issue. I would have to run a 10 meter dash. So then I had to tell both of them that we are going to walk and not a brisk walk. But I must say that in those early days in TIFR, I learned a lot of physics in the discussions, actually on the in the Friday seminars, also in the uh, tea table, which uh, again Sri Ram talks, uh, Shastri talks about, that it was not always is uh, cricket scores and 
you know the latest films it was actually with mustan sir and deepak a lot of interesting issues for example with deepak we have walked on the sea shore and discussed with ramnath kaushik the planning of his experiment i don't know if deepak remembers that when he was trying to plan that experiment in gauri bidnur then with deepak i think we even had a small article this was because jyoti nivetia who used to be a tif student and who used to uh, edit a science magazine popular magazine so one day at the, in the west canteen she again caught both me and deepak and said you should write an article for science news so we said but what will we write so she said why don't you write about what would be if planck's constant was 10% higher unfortunately i don't have a copy of that article anywhere but it was all kind of funny things that we had written and i think we had great fun writing it so a copy <laughs> oh, you have a copy still i see <laughs> i don't but it's been a pleasure knowing and I, one thing was there that both manju also i met soon after deepak got married and they came to bombay but actually the most interesting experience i had was visiting manju and deepak when they were in paris and their first daughter was born and it was a wonderful time that was you know very stressful time for manju and deepak for sure but it was there were some very wonderful moments we shared together many a times i have been a you know welcome unwelcome a sudden dinner visitor at manju's and deepak's mustan sir and rashida have also made me welcome at their homes many a times and what well, in all this there is one statement i remember when once i when the uh, mustan sir became the director so i said it's really good when one's friends become directors so mustan sir said well, it's not so good for the friends <laughs> <laughs> that is it i remember it and the other one was an excellent advice that deepak gave me i was having trouble making a decision whether i should leave bombay or not leave bombay if i leave bombay where should i join you know there was a bit of a dilemma in my mind and of course deepak the excellent person that he is he told me anyway you know if you are having trouble deciding then probably not it doesn't matter what decision you make and to be honest i think that was absolutely spoken like a good statistical physicist <laughs> I applied to life but i indeed i think you know i have benefited from that kind of advice from him and last but not the least i think of we have arranged a few schools and i have really enjoyed arranging those schools for school teachers with uh, deepak i have seen his commitment to education and for mustan sir i just love his precision all the time he is precise you know any expression it's wonderful and i was very pleased to have won the uh, that particular ipa award that you and me won together i was honored that i shared it with you so deepak and mustan sir you have been two very good friends and it has been wonderful watching you to be the mentors of the statistical physics community to do see the wonderful physics you did but most important that that being the wonderful human beings that you are i wish you both very many years of research and happy life both together all the very best mustan sir and deepak thank you thank you very much thank so, you thank you roini so now there is two questions i i want to now ask a question to you deepak you can decide the fork there are two three people who have asked a few words to say so i will do that and after that i would request each or few maybe to say a few words will that be okay yes sir sure. okay so first uh, there have been a few people who asked me so one is sampat sampat are you still there yes yes i'm here thank you rohini so oh, yeah could you yes yes uh, say yeah, i am say i am words. really very honored that i got the invitation to participate in this uh, function honor of uh, deepak and sanpir who have been my highly respectable colleagues and um, uh, friends and i am an odd man out i thought i am an odd man out actually i am not i know almost everybody here so therefore i feel very comfortable to say whatever i want to say so anyway uh, i joined tf for 1976 mustan sir also joined at the same time after finishing phd i joined after msc and tf falls also a piece of group so of course deepak joined also around the same time 
So uh, I was uh, working on valence fluctuation. That was a very novel phenomenon conducted by the physics. Mosam Verma already did some work during his postdoc on valence fluctuation. Um, therefore, when he realized that when he joined here yeah, for just years to joining, um, I mean, he used to really, uh, I mean, enjoy discussing, um, coming down and discussing. You know, in TFR, there is a, a joke, which I don't share. Of course, I don't mind sharing it here. Um, some people, not every one of my very senior colleagues used to say, you know, if you people in theory group in third floor, if you tie the eyes, bring them to basement and remove the, uh, uh, remove the uh, kerchief or not them go out, they cannot go out. They will not find their way out. So, because basement is full of caves. In my laboratory, there is only one laboratory, solitary physics, which is a deep cave. And if you get in, you cannot get out. And Musandi Burma is one person in TIFR used to interact with experimentalists like us. I mean, in a very simple way, you will find a way out of the laboratory, you will also go out on his own. <laughs> <laughs> so, really, you know, there is Yannama. Do you remember that Musan said the basement Yannama? Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. It's very difficult to get in and get out. So, anyway, he used to very. Really... Sorry. Oh, oh. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, um, uh, since then, we used to have a lot of interaction on academic matters. Even attended a course by Musan Sir on magnetism after I joined TIFR. I am from chemistry background. He used to make courses very, very simple for people like me, uh, so that people can, like me can understand. And of course, from time to time, it's true with Deepak Dutt. I mean, whenever, you know, you are, they are so, I mean, people like me felt very comfortable. Experimentalists go and talk to them. I mean, you just go and talk to them. Just, of course, you had given notice to them that they are not sitting in a seminar or somewhere. They used to explain to us all the concerns in a very simple manner. In fact, I found it extremely comfortable to talk to Deepak and Musan said whenever I had any doubt. Even two months back, I sent a paper to Musan said, can you please explain to me? Explain to me one hour. And of course, same thing, I think of Satya is here. Sometimes I used to call him Satya on I mean, mobile or something. I used to, I mean, of course, when you retire, I will tell you more things about you, Satya. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So what I want to say is that, they, I mean, these two colleagues, I mean, we all felt very comfortable to interact with their experimentalists. They were also members of Kandal Metaphysics Department for a long time. They used to attend every meeting, participate in the discussion, scientific discussions or recruitment. And they have contributed a lot to the experimental Kandal Metaphysics Forum. We, we, are all, we all vote to them. And they are extremely friendly, absolutely honest. Level of integrity is very high. So let me quote three instances and then I will stop. One, Deepak Dar. So when Musandi Burma became director of the institute, I'm the first founder say, he said, all the faculty members should participate in a running race. Okay, so now I became dean. Now I cannot disobey my director. So now I have to participate. I never used to participate in any games. Now, you know, you heard just now Deepak Dar every day runs in the, in the institute in the morning, one hour. And he is the fastest runner in TIFR. Now, I have to stand with Deepak Dar in, uh, in, along with other faculty members to participate in a running race. They thought he's the fastest. <laughs> <laughs> now, I stood. Now, the point is that I'm, I won. <laughs> running race. Now, Deepak Dar. <laughs> Okay, now the point is Deepak that played a trick. He's such, he's, uh, what I want, he's such a thorough gentleman. I told Deepak, I better I walk out. <laughs> anyway, I thought what in the fire, matter of fun. Anyway, he just stood behind that so that I take go forward. You know, he's such a thorough gentleman. Even in games, he, he, he allows others to succeed, even people like me. <laughs> anyway, this is one uh, thing that I'll never forget. Now, coming to Musan Sir, Musan Sir organized one, he was an IUPOP member. Um, and he organized one IUPOP international meeting in TIFR. There were very eminent people from all over the world, both, of course, male members, female members. I mean, I he somehow he roped me in just to he want to take some help to organize some help him out. So, and of course, TIFR, as you know, and all the colleges were full of all kinds of junk. And okay, we, I used to help him so that everything looks clean and neat. So he used to, you know, he and me, I mean, you in goes to bathroom, you used to drag me to the bathroom of a lady, ladies' bathroom. And of course, he informed some ladies around, look, we are entering the bathroom. He will ensure, he will ensure, he will ensure that every nook and corner is kept clean. Now, what I want to say is that anything that Musanse takes up is very thorough, absolutely thorough. In fact, I really learned, learned a lot from him. 
and of course when i became dean with him i mean our life was so simple to get along to interact and talk every day rashida used to wait outside at 8 o'clock i mean 8 to 9 every day we used to use give me time every day for almost every day for one hour for discussion on day to day matters so he is very very absolutely thorough very hard working very sincere absolute honesty in whatever he does and several time you want goes deepak dar in third floor for discussion they are so humble and simple i mean i really learned i am one of the beneficiaries of their simplicity and their uh, and their sort of knowledge i think they could sort of give to some of you are all benefited by that i would like to thank both of them for that let me another give final incident somebody told me oh, but now it's really final huh? because we are okay. okay then i will stop here i would like to wish both of them all the best and um, is that my pleasure for me to interact with them thank you very much sorry sampath no, no, okay. because we are running uh, the I clock understand. is not ticking thank you, thank you. because there is language yeah so prabhat you wanted to say you said 30 seconds so i'll give you one minute <laughs> <laughs> but i don't see prabhat 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 yeah, shukla he doesn't he doesn't seems to be online all right unmute, unmute, he, is, he is there he is there i can see is there, there? there? prabhat okay. are you there unmute unmute ah unmute then prabhat and please uh... okay can you hear me now yes, yes we can hear you now okay thank you rohini uh, i just will take 30 seconds i just uh, wanted to uh, recall a memory from 40 years ago uh, it covers something that has not been covered so far um, you know it's about a conference that uh, surjit singh and i organized in shillong in meghalaya mm-hmm. Yeah. and uh, it brings out sort of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, two points you know of you know deepak dhar's and mustansa's personality they haven't changed over the 40 years the same modest unassuming people i mean it's difficult to go to shillong even now we imagine you know going to shillong you know 40 years ago you know partly you travel by train partly you travel by taxi partly you travel by air and mustang said it invented the word for it he said this is the eastern frontier so so you know it it shows you know both their sort of unassumingness and modesty and and their sort of commitment to really promoting you know uh, statmec in this country that's all i wanted to say thank you uh, thank you prabodh for those very i think very useful words thanks and the last uh, there are two people one is subodh shenoy who is a friend of many years of many people here and who is right now i think in tifr right subodh in hyderabad so subodh unmute unmute yourself please and i i must say that we are really and totally running out of time no, i cts are... people are going to push us out any moment okay. and we do want to hear deepak and mustan sir yes indeed yes indeed so uh, yes, i i don't know uh, our friends as long as hrk uh, but i would say that uh, uh, i came back to india to same kind of visiting i think it is called visiting member tifr uh, bombay uh, ha and then uh, from there i went to iop and then i ended up uh, at the university of hyderabad is one of the founding uh, founding lecturers in fact sriram shastri was there also and uh, again the same kind of thing uh, the place was actually a uh, Uh, a few rooms in a kind of howling wilderness way out of hyderabad and so uh, the idea of girish agarwal who is also a visiting member of the team over there is the first uh, dean of physics and then the idea was we should have some kind of research and so on uh, you know no library no students no tables but we wanted to have some research so we wanted to invite active young people and uh, both deepak and mustan sir came over this would have been i think 78 778 or something uh, deepak gave i think a series of lectures on real space renormalization group uh, on sierpinski triangles or something like that uh, which is well received and mustan sir came a bit uh, later on mixed valence samarium sulfide or something under pressure so that was uh, highly appreciated and uh, you can see from that their effort mentioned by a colleague from bombay of actually reaching out and trying to do something to interact with the universities within the system uh, so uh, full circle of course now i'm a colleague of mustansis at tifr bombay uh, but uh, the, the one thing which comes through both of them is kind of intellectual precision and human kindness 
which don't always go together. And uh, so I just wanted to um, say that, oh yeah, one more thing is one of our MSc students, in fact, became one of the early PhD students of Mustansi, uh, V. Subramaniam, and it was good to see him here. Uh, so congratulations to both of them of reaching 70 and uh, hope a few more decades of uh, you know, good health and good research. And it's a privilege to have known. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Good. Thank and you, Mr. Actually, there is one last person that is Mohan Fani, who had asked ah. me. So I don't know if he's still around. Mohan, are you still around? Yeah, I am around. Okay. Yeah, I saw him. Uh, in a... Yeah, so please uh, say your few words and then Mohan, I would request. I one, one minute, 30 seconds? Yes, one minute, one minute, because you are a good friend. Okay, so <laughs> then uh, I'll say hello, uh, Mustan, hello, Deepak. And hello, Hi. Rashida. And Hi. Uh, I, have, uh, I don't think you remember me. Uh, but that was uh, 40 years back. I used to be in TIFR. Of course we do. <laughs> and uh, so I spent a couple of years in TIFR. Uh, we were all in the 30s. I mean, just about 30, I think. And uh, those days we were, uh, I started working with, uh, because these uh, two guys were deep into uh, directed population. So I also got uh, sucked in. And uh, so that was a, Lovely time for uh, three years. We, we used to move around uh, constantly together at the trial. And uh, what happened? What happened? Okay. We can't hear you, Mohan. Yeah, no. So, uh, so yeah, there are a lot of uh, uh, you know everyday discussions, evening discussion, night discussion. I mean, Mr. The son used to go home. He used to be, you know, nine o'clock to six o'clock as his uh, routine. But uh, Deepak used to, I don't know, used to have evening sessions. Rohin used to be around also, and uh, uh, so th those were those were, you know, two years was fantastic. So I remember in uh, I have actually forgotten every physics. I mean everything about physics. So but one I think I remember uh, the innovation of directed sight. Uh, animals, animals. two-dimensional lattices. This is one uh, something we worked on, and uh, I just wanted to say something about you know Deepak's uh, quickness in uh, uh, doing things. So we eliminated uh, these uh, uh, lattice animals, and there was a number. I was staring at it from the morning. It they looked like there was a pattern, and I just couldn't make out. But uh, Deepak came, and you know after 15, 20 minutes, he said, "Okay, oh, I know." So he started writing on the board and. There it was. I mean, it was the exact relation which you hold uh, called, uh, about, uh, you know, few of the lights that we, that we checked that it uh, holds for about all the uh, innovative uh, yeah, numbers. And then we had a paper. So, but it was amazing that, you know, how fast one could uh, look into numbers and see a pattern. So, uh, so that was one thing I remember. And I, I think uh, since we have uh, less time, I'll just not uh, go too deep. Uh, we also, I also remember, Mustan, if you remember that we, uh, with you, you had a lot of contact in experimental groups. So Bridge, uh, Aurora. And oh, we, yes. Uh, yeah, we That's started right. uh, uh, thinking that, you know, we would see. Uh, out right. Yeah, uh, diode register network, and we see the wedge and all that. You know. Uh, yes. I don't know what happened. I think nothing happened. The bulbs used to light up, no, Mustan sir? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, nothing. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. that's fun. That but, was great fun. Yeah. yeah okay, sorry, man. Uh, uh, I remember uh, Mustan used to be uh, extremely uh, well organized. So, one thing I remember that he used to be the first person in the lunch queue. And we <laughs> and uh, Deepa could you know, follow behind and we will not be the first person, but somehow squeeze in and go with Musanshi. So uh, that is uh, something I remember. And those days, uh, uh, we had made several visits to Rashida's uh, place. Thanks, Rashida. And uh, uh, Musa, uh, Deepa was still uh, single. And I remember, I think, who asked? I, I don't know, maybe probably Roy. He asked, uh, so Deepak, when are you getting married? So Deepak said, soon. So <laughs> I was kind of taken aback. So I, I asked Deepak, Deepak, 
So when this guy went off, I asked Deepak, are you getting married soon? Said, I don't know. Said, but you told him. <laughs> the answer I used to tell when you know, I was in my PhD uh, days, somebody asked me, when are you completing PhD? I said, soon. And it used to work. So I used the same line. So that is Deepak. So I think uh, there. Uh, uh, I think if I start, you know, remembering uh, incidents, there will be uh, too much. I have uh, crossed thirty seconds. I think. I'll uh, all the best. I, you have. Uh, I have also crossed seventy years, but uh, nobody is doing anything for me. But, <laughs> <laughs> we all wish you happy seventy, Manohar <laughs> Mohan. So, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, you know, uh, listen, everybody. Listening to uh, my old friends uh, being felicitated like this is uh, so proud. I feel proud. So all the best. Uh, do more work, and see you sometimes. I don't know where. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Mohan. Actually, this really? reminds me yeah. of a story with Probir and Deepak. We had dared the, the Probir uh, Deepak once that Probir used to, you know, say something and then close his eyes, <laughs> and then after a few seconds he would open them. So we had all decided that we had dared Deepak that he would start talking to you and close his eyes, and you should go away <laughs> with the lid downstairs before he opens them again. <laughs> but I don't remember whether Deepak did that <laughs> in spite of our many requests. It's so polite to do that. <laughs> okay, so thanks very much. I also want to mention that Arun Grover here gives his best wishes, say, saying uh, that uh, he was a science talent. Scholar with you both, and he wishes his uh, gives his best wishes. And now I leave the floor to two of you, and then we will close the story. So, between you, you can decide who speaks first. You can speak first. <laughs> All right. Okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyway, it's been a great two days. I mean, thank you again, uh, organizers, uh, Shakuntala, Kavita, Pradip. And everybody else, I, I know a lot of people were there, uh, you know, in the background. Thank you for remembering us and you know, uh, planning this. It, it's been great, you know. So as I said in the morning, I mean, um, you know, you have shown a lot of affection to us, but we reciprocate in full measure. I mean, you know, we have great affection for all of you, all of the friends who spoke this evening. Thank you very much. I mean, it was. Wonderful to go back in time, you know, uh, to science and days uh, and, you know, uh, and on. Thank you so much. Uh, I just wanted to, to uh, spend two, three minutes uh, on some uh, stories about Deepak. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, so actually, yeah, so, you know, soon after he joined, you know, so he was single, I was single, and we decided to go on a picnic. I, I think I've said this story before, but let, let, let me say it again. I mean, I, I don't know if uh, others have heard it. So we took a boat and we went to Uran. And uh, at Uran, we didn't quite know what to do after we had finished sitting in the park. So then we saw a hill, we climbed up, and then we found ourselves in the middle of a smuggler's den. And we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they released some dogs. Really hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so we, I mean, you could have seen two physicists running down at full speed <laughs> down the hill. It was quite, uh, you know, quite scary, but, uh, you know, uh, after a while it made a good story. Okay, that was one incident. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say, so Deepak had come to my wedding, my actual wedding. We had a function in Bombay, Surat. but the actual wedding was in Surat. That's and he was the best man, I'm and uh, our full community was quite, uh, you know, happy to uh, welcome him. And uh, you know, he made a great best man. So I, I just remember that, you know, I mean, and he took part in every function with full gusto. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say is that you know, sorry, was there a question? Biggest wedding I have ever been to. <laughs> what was that? It was the, the best, most <laughs> lavish wedding I have ever been to. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I actually sat on a horse and Deepak, you know, came along with me. Not a... <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Anyway, uh, 
Yeah, so the last thing I wanted to recall is that, uh, you know, we've written uh, quite a few papers together. Two of them have never been published. Oh. And I'm uh, glad they have not been because uh, <laughs> just as we were about to submit or something, we found some mistakes uh, in them. I still have the manuscripts if anybody wants to read. One is on directed percolation. We thought we had determined PC exactly. <laughs> and the other was on the Falikov Kimball model. But I think both papers were extremely interesting in their own way. You know, the, the errors were also interesting, but you know, that's the way it was. Uh, anyway, so it was great knowing and working with Deepak all these years. And I have to say that uh, I had a fantastic time with him. To all the students at TIFR, all the faculty at TIFR, I think TIFR is a very special place. It was in the 1980s, it is in the 2020s, still very special. And uh, I would uh, say that uh, I owe a lot to the institution, you know, for, for being what it was, allowing freedom, uh, academic and otherwise, uh, which is rare to find also. So anyway, uh, support of the institute, support of the family once in a while, you know, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. at least I'm in the picture I mentioned. Thank yeah, you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. You know, heartfelt thank you to everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. So thank you. now Deepak. So Deepak, you are really going to have the last word. <laughs> Let me start by saying that. I am deeply touched by the fact that all the old friends have remembered me and, uh, you know, they have bothered to come and say nice things. It has been very nice knowing all these friends and uh, growing old together. The <laughs> other thing I would like to say is that the memory is an interesting thing. So most of the stories you told, I don't remember them. <laughs> 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 I remember some other stories which I don't want to tell now. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah. can make up some story now. I think the environment provided by the institute and by the Indian community in general has been very nice and generous. So, you know, we meet at conferences with people in, from various places and all of them are very nice and friendly. And so I would say that, you know, this feeling of um, being generous is mutual and, you know, people are generous to me, so I'm kind to them you know, like that. Right. Yeah. I will stop there. It's very dark here. I mean. Yeah, but we are just about able to see your face. Now we don't even see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now ah, this is good. This was yeah. Now this is good. Yeah, because we started early in the day and now it's know. dark, but I didn't turn on the lights. I have also moved my place <laughs> in that since we started. Right. Okay, so I think I will stop there. Yeah. And, I mean, all these... People I knew from the time we were in BSc students, Arun Grover, Krishnamurti, Mustansi. Yeah. They have been great friends and, and there are a lot of other friends. And uh, being at TFR, we got very many very good students. So, I mean, I'm as grateful to them as they are to me. And that is what I would say. Yeah, you know, people have uh, said a lot about building a school of statistical physics and so on, but we never thought of it that way. We just had fun. I mean, we just, you know, did what we wanted to do. I mean, I think, I, I, I don't know what Deepak thinks, but that's what I think. I mean, we just went along, you know, right? We're not consciously building any school. That's the best way of building things, both of you, you know? Mm -hmm. So again, let me thank first the organizers and also both of you for listening to good, bad, ugly, funny, all the stories. And as I said again, thanks for being the great human beings you are. And 
keep on being that so on this uh, note i will close this session but i have a uh, request from uh, kavita that all the people should turn on their uh, video so that we can have mm -hmm. a conference photo do any we have a vote of thanks first yes from now it's up to you i uh, hand yeah. it back to you okay thanks thanks so much doni uh, so but uh, we have also formal vote of thanks from the organizers yes kutla so kutla we do that yeah. i think we'll all turn on our videos for uh, zoom photos for, for this me nice memories ashti okay. kutla yes yeah so uh, so these are some closing remarks uh, on behalf of the organizers first i would like to thank all the speakers who despite their busy schedule some some of them wrote to us that please avoid this particular session because we have teaching and such commitments but even then they all came and uh, gave their talks uh, i we all thank the session chairs and for uh, i mean managing the time so effectively and um, also all the uh, other participants who were present asking good questions and uh, i mean uh, enriching the scientific content of this conference and our heartfelt thanks to icts conference support team anupama arun and others and uh, they really provided us a fantastic support and we did not have to worry about much at all uh, and uh, of course apart from me kavita and tridip who were uh, part of this organizing committee we were all the time receiving supports and suggestions from all many other students of deepak and mustan sir both so thanks to all of them and uh, finally i wanted to thank both deepak and mustan sir for uh, just allowing to have this conference allowing to organize this conference and also playing such a ma major role in creating this statfis community although maybe unwittingly they did not realize what they were doing <laughs> so okay thanks to all of you so with that i would like to end here and formally end this conference uh, conference but we have to get this conference photo all of us right so please turn on your videos and then uh, icts support team can uh, take a photo yeah.